was not elected to serve one party. You were not elected. John Stewart of The Daily Show may have started the tide. This special election has gotten a lot of buzz. So according to Kellyanne Conway, there is now a lower bar of entry for the Senate than a mall in Alabama. But now there are dozens of shows across the dial mixing comedy with politics. Stand out of groping range, everyone. It's going to be a long four years. If there was a moment that defined satire's now more powerful role, it was Jimmy Kimmel's successful on-air campaign to fight the repeal of Obamacare. Coverage for all? No. In fact, it'll kick about 30 million Americans off insurance. Recently, when Saturday Night Live didn't do a skit about Harvey Weinstein, it was criticized and played catch-up the following week. Such is the level of expectation now that comedy and satire feature a good dose of politics. Animated shows like The Simpsons have been doing that for years. Nearly two decades ago, this sketch predicted a President Trump. We've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. It was around that time that Canadian Joel H. Cohen became a writer on the show. Now co-executive producer, he's written more than two dozen episodes. And all because of one young man. Okay, so I shake points in basketball. Just don't make a big production of it. So what does he think about the growing focus on politics in comedy? And how does he feel about the stinging political backlash against the woman who gave him his first break in the comedy business? We sat down to talk earlier this week in Toronto. How long does it take from the period of time where you have an idea for a show till I see it? It's very kind for you to think I have an idea for a show. <laughs> uh, but no, if I have, from the time someone pitches something till it's on TV is roughly nine months, just because the animation process is so laborious that it takes about nine months to, to finish an episode. Which is a long time in, in TV terms. Yes. So how is in it that terms. the show, in any terms, yeah, yes. How is it that the show has maintained its ability to stay relevant when it's when it's actually sort of in time distant from the things that we're watching every day in the news? You know, it's funny. It's in a way, I think we we don't do stuff that are it's timely. Like we won't do a joke uh, about whatever crazy thing Trump said this morning, um, whatever day this airs, that will be valid. But yeah. whatever crazy thing he said, because nine months from now it'll be there'll be seven thousand other crazy things that will have happened. But we do do two little rewrites along that nine month cycle. And sometimes in the last rewrite, we can slip something in that's only a month away from the air date. Um, but what I think is what we, I think the bigger picture about the show that's really been great for the show is that, you know, characters never age. There's 30 seasons almost of the show, and you could turn on any season and be confused for any other season. And we try, I think, to write stories that are a little bit universal. So maybe some of the relevance just comes out of the fact that it's this evergreen and this constant and it feels relevant even when. But when the White House is arguably churning out comedic material yes. for you all the time, yes. is it hard to resist the temptation to kind of reference something? I mean, that's what Twitter's for, I think, for, for individual writers and for Donald Trump himself, but uh, it, it's hard to resist, but we just know, unless it's a big issue that is going to be around nine months or a year from now, we, we just don't touch it in that specific sense. You know, stuff about like gay marriage, we'll do an episode on that, but nothing, you know, about a tax bill or something like that, because it's just not going to be around. I mean, obviously we have the Rick Mercer show, widely successful here, the, this hour is 22 minutes, but we don't have the late night comedic right. culture that is you know, like a bedrock now in the U.S. and is driving a lot of the political conversation. Think about Jimmy Kimmel. Right. I mean, you're a Canadian who's lived and worked in the States for years now. Why do you think that that isn't part of the culture here? The thing about the States is just volume. There's so many shows and they're all ch desperate for content and luckily the president has been very generous about providing content to all these shows. Um, he's a real jobs creator. He's given all these comedy <laughs> writers work. Uh, but I, I don't, you know, I, I think just that in the States now, there, there does feel like there's a little bit of a shift where uh, it's almost like these performers have an understanding with the audience that we all don't like Trump, right? Um, it's this assumption where I think with previous presidents, the country was a little bit more split 50-50, but now it feels like there's a bit of a license to, to really go a step further because it's this... You, you feel like you're preaching to the choir to some extent. Um, and that has maybe emboldened them a little bit, whereas previous, you know, you, there was Obama, it was funny stuff about Obama, but I think you respected that half the country didn't like Obama. When you talk about going a step further, I mean, there is a step too far, right? Yes. There was a writer for SNL who tweeted about uh, Barron Trump right mm -hmm. after the inauguration. She was fired the same day. Um, Kathy Griffin right, you know, right, right. famously held up this sort of mock head of Trump, yes. and her career has, has really paid for it. Yeah. I, I'm. 
you know, I'll say I'm friends with Kathy. She will send an angry letter saying we are not friends. Her lawyers will be all over this. But I've sort of seen through her that what's happened as a result of different people react differently and think this was obscene or too far. I didn't necessarily think it was too far at the time. I thought it was just a, an art piece. That was six months ago. And I feel like now if that happened, I don't think that response would be the same because I think this meter has moved or, as to what is obscene. And I still think you know people that are innocent, like Barron Trump and anyone that is, I'll just say innocent, should not be dragged into it. But there's no way Donald Trump, of course, isn't innocent. And, and he says horrible things. And someone did something maybe counteractive to that. So anyhow, I think that meter has moved where that wouldn't be as obscene today as it was at the time it happened. Interesting to talk to you. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you.